<laughs> one of the things you have done, Jasper, is you made Top Knot or Not, which is a big thing for the Asian community. So those of you that haven't watched it, please watch it. It's available on BBC iPlayer. And mm-hmm. it's a pretty much, how do you describe it? A short skit, maybe? Of about 10 minutes yeah. long. Mon- monologue, I'd say. Yeah, yeah a, short, a 10 minute monologue yeah. of a Punjabi boy who has, a, who has his hair, basically. And he's mm-hmm. growing it out. And it's about a difficult day that he had at school and the struggles he has within mm-hmm. it, wanting to keep his hair and wanting to cut it. And it hit pretty much every nail on the head that I felt at school as well growing up. And oh, I wow. think it might have resonated with Garan in the same way too. But we have very different schooling experiences, me and Garan. So yeah. Mm. I, I, it means a lot hearing that from people that have had similar experiences or have decided to keep their gear or not. Because yeah. that, that story um, is honestly a story that I know a lot of things have gone through, including my husband. Um, yeah. And he was probably one of the people that in, inspired the story the most because it is essentially okay. his story. And even kind of the basis of, of what happens on that school day of um, someone calling that young boy's vodka, a handkerchief, um, yeah. is actually something that happened to my husband. So I, before I wrote this script, obviously I, di- I didn't want to dive into it without having those conversations mm. with people that have, have, have actually had these experiences. So speaking to my mm. husband, my nephews who are all growing their gears and, and all okay. have jewelries, um, my dad <laughs> who, who, who wears the star. Um, nice. So speaking to family, friends, other, other friends that I have who are, things that have kept their gears and hearing mm. about all their stories because I wanted to tell this story as authentically as I could but also being really sensitive with this topic because it is such a sensitive topic and mm. it wasn't about getting it right or wrong because I don't necessarily think there is a right or wrong when it comes to storytelling that is the point of storytelling that is telling mm. stories there, there are multiple different stories um, but I wanted to tell one that felt authentic and felt like it would re- resonate with the Sikh community and 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 six who have gone through these experiences so um mm. yeah it means a lot to know that it resonated with you guys as well no honestly it did um it meant a lot to me uh because well me and Garen we both went to different schools so Garen went to a school where he was surrounded by a lot of minority folks so not mm-hmm. just six but also Muslims Hindus etc and the yeah. grammar school of his was more accepting than say the state school that I went to which mm-hmm. where I was one of like four Indian kids in the whole year and I was asked questions like, what's that in your head? Uh, mm. Is that a handkerchief, etc.? all this kind of stuff. And you kind of just let it slide. But looking back on it, you're like, oh, wait, that wasn't that wasn't nice. Like all the yeah. stuff people were saying to did you. Did you actually wear a patka or did you have like the... There are some so people I phased out of the, the... I phased out of the jura in like year seven, eight. So during mm. school, I think I had a jura and then I think I changed to patka halfway through. Yeah. No, jura is just a top knot. That's not... As in, did you have... Like a I think I, I think I just had that. Yeah, yeah, that with like a a handkerchief, let's say, on top. I guess they call it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. Okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, I and was... it's it's interesting what you said there about like all those little comments that you would get because that that's mm. what I was really trying to get across that. Obviously, when people watch the film, I don't want to give too much away. But yeah. when he's making that decision about his gears towards the end of the film, um, mm. it isn't like there's this one day where you try it, you, you go through this radical decision of kind of keeping your yeah. gears or not. It's all these small microaggressions of like yeah. things that happen over time, a little comment here, a little comment there. It's not always a big dramatic event, which is sometimes how it's been conveyed on TV before. Yeah, like this yeah, big yeah. dramatic thing happens and then you go home and you're like deciding whether you want to keep it or not. And I wanted to yeah. convey that it, it's not always like that. It's all these, it's these little microaggressions, these micro assaults that, I, I describe microaggressions like paper cuts. It's like you get a, a little paper cut here, a little paper cut there, a little paper cut there. And over the time, mm. they hurt and it hurts. But at the time, you might not really realize what's going on or you don't take it too seriously. You're just like, okay, that doesn't mean too much. But over time, it mm. will impact how you feel about yourself and it will impact some of the decisions you want to make. So, um, yeah, that that's one of the things I did want to get across that it isn't always this one big dramatic event. It's sometimes yeah. these small drips of things that happen over time. I was expecting that. I was expecting before I watched it, it was like, oh, it's going to be a shot where whatever's happened maybe he's been a fight and his kiss is open he's walking home and he's got his yeah. back on his hand mm. but actually yeah the story you told is probably represents like a bigger portion of what people have and it's the ongoing thing and looking back at it now if you don't have sangat you know if you're not in a strong community if you don't have mm. your mom and dad telling you sakhiya about you know uh, guru sabs and kiss and pai matidas and all these things mm. 
then actually it, it's hard it is hard and that's where i think indy and i had slightly different kind of experiences where actually i was around people who never disrespected my case or my practical mm. i never felt like i was outsider um but then the other thing indeed was i went to india a lot like i used to go every year man no you uh, did for I, sure i only went probably about two three times in my whole life i think twice mm-hmm. no three times twice mm-hmm. to punjab that's it and yeah that once was when i was very young and once was like two three years ago no four years ago so yeah very different experiences and with that going you're talking about sicky role models i'm talking about just role models around me like my brother and my dad um mm. i saw that they kept their hair and they were older mm. than me so anything that i sort of had an issue with i'd tell my brother and my brother would say just tell me i'll beat him up i was like you really work like that you're kind of in university and i'm going through this right now but then yeah it's the other thing i was told as well is if anyone touches your jura you're allowed to do whatever you want. You can fight back, you can kick, you can scream, you can punch, you can bite. I was like, oh, really? That's like code red. So, so if anyone touches it, yeah, it, it's game over. You, you can do what you need to now. And then at the end of the day, mum and dad said, if anything happens, um, we will back you up in the headmaster's office because it's a religious thing and they shouldn't touch it. Mm. I was like, right, that's good to know. It didn't come to that, but it's good to know mm. that if that happened. Yeah, but knowing what, what your rights are and knowing yeah. what's acceptable and not acceptable is, is so important that we are teaching that to, to young people. Um, and also what you're saying about role models as well, about whether it's role models or just having Sangat around you that it can support you through all of this makes a big, big mm. difference because going through these struggles alone is hard. And there are kids that mm. are going through this alone. They might there maybe... Are young kids that don't necessarily have people in their family who have perhaps kept, kept their sounding gears boards. or, or yeah, have yeah. a sounding board. So mm. I'm glad we're now starting to have these conversations and there are these wider networks out there and different Sikh organisations out there doing what they can for young people to know that they're not alone in this, that there is support out there. And if they are struggling to mm. find the help and find some support. There are parents yeah. out there now that are kind of going in different directions and they're saying, because they had it so hard growing up, they don't want their kids to keep their hair because they, they don't want mm. them to go through the same adversities. And I think mm. it was one of my family members asked me, how was it for me growing up? And I said, I was okay-ish to a point. I still had comments and like issues, but I think society nowadays, it depends on where you are, doesn't it? I initially said to them, it's not as bad nowadays, but it really depends on where you're from. So yeah, if you're absolutely. from a really poor area that people don't have any sort of education behind it, they're gonna you're going to be met with more adversity than say if you're in a posher area where the where the comments are a lot more subtle and you wouldn't really feel it when you're younger but you might understand it when you're older and look back on it and think oh shit actually i was being given the same type of abuse but in a much more subtle sugar-coated way or it could yeah not maybe so much i I think whether it's a a working class area or a a middle upper Mm. class area i think it's more about how much of that demographic is actually there as well because in london we'll see a certain demographic and maybe it is a little bit more accepting because it is a more diverse city yeah. but as soon as you go outside mm. London, um and if you're only one sick family in that entire town whether they're posh or not maybe a different yeah, place yeah. to be in yeah yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. gonna stand out so mm. yeah it, it it's also involving those people as well so being quite careful that we're not being too city focused and London centric or Midlands focused where Mm. there is a lot of Sangat in those places. Also reaching out to these other communities where we do have six and maybe more isolated areas that they don't feel too alone either, because that's where we have been seeing some of these more violent instances happening. Um, Mm. It is in areas that are outside of, of the cities and outside of the more diverse areas. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. I know you want to say something. I've forgotten now. <laughs> but, but this, but this is all good gonna... stuff. And I, I think creating awareness is very important. The sounding board thing, I think, is really important. I think I, listened, I was listening to Jordan Peterson this morning and he just said that his statement was, we are not good at thinking. He said, humans are, are not good at thinking, but we're good at talking. Right? And he was just mm. essentially describing the premise of counselling. He was just saying the reason why people enjoy that or get value from it is that essentially you're unclogging and getting clarity on your thoughts. Which yeah. if you try and do yourself, it's too hard to be objective. And again, now you put it in the context of being nine, ten years old. You're trying to fit into a peer group. You're trying to find your identity. Maybe you just want to, you know, have a clean header of the ball. I remember trying to play football with my Jura and then trying to header the oh, ball. And, like, <laughs> and then they're like, oh, no, no, you need to like header it here and not in your matta. And I used to play rugby, right? Every time you play rugby, a patka comes off. Then it was like swimming. And then they were like, oh, you can't put a swimming cap on. You have to get special permission from the headmaster. 
I was like, mm. why? I was like, come on, man. Have you seen the, like how long my hair is? So mm. all these things are there. Mm. But again, yeah, if I had it again, like if you're going to learn from these things, you're going to learn how to manage uh, and deal with people. Mm. And it, as, a, as a kind of other thing is you, you become more educated about your faith and the ability to yeah. then convey that with other people. Yeah. yeah. Like now, like there's, a, there's been a big movement, I'd say, last 15, 10, 15 years about, you know, the sea contribution in terms of the world wars, right? And there's a lot of people about, look, our faith is around uh, protecting other faiths. It's about doing siva. Uh, mm. And it's a well-known fact about how many lives are lost in the First and Second World War. And a lot of people will rally around that, that this is a warrior faith. Mm. And I would hope that all, you know, young boys, that they have, you know, they're proud of their history and what mm. we are. Um, at the same time, I think the other side is not to be critical of people who maybe choose to cut their gears. Because mm, I, I think, again, yeah. I, went, I went through a phase where I didn't voice this, but internally, if there were people close to me, like friends who I saw doing it, I'd be like, why are you doing it? And I'd become yeah. very judgmental in my head. I did right? the same thing when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now it's like, no, like everyone's on their own path. Uh, yeah. yeah. You just have to You understand that, that when you're you older. Understand the, you do, yeah. and that's you should you should get wiser as you're older. It doesn't always happen. No, um, <laughs> but these are things you reflect on. And the other thing, actually, I remember an instance when you were talking about touching your podcast. My best friend from school, <laughs> we talk about this often. He once threw a football, like through it, just at my head. He, I don't think he was intentionally trying to hit me in the head, but hit me in the podcast. Right. Oh my. And podcast was fine. Didn't come off or anything. And I walked off really stroppy, really mm-hmm. stroppy. And remember, he's my best friend. And, and after a while, I called off, and you know he'd apologize and everything. And then I remember, I, was at, I think it was at a Gataka class. This is some years on. And somebody was talking to me, someone much more learned than me. And he was saying that you, with, each, with any action in life, you have to look at what is the intention behind actions. And so when I look at it in that context, of what's the intention here to disrespect my Sikhi? What's the intention here to knock off my Barka? The answer was no in both of these things. Mm. And so to just blindly become angry before understanding that you know again this comes with increasing age it's like these are the conversations to have uh you know with young boys but the awareness mm. that's created from such a film is yeah it's phenomenal yeah it's it's massive, massive, man. it was brilliant yeah i was watching yeah, it, I was just smiling i, uh, I really I was, like that kid well. yeah yeah i want to give it i want to give a shout out to sahib um sahib, he's neat okay fellow East Londoner like me. Um, I did so, like how he kept his nuances of being from East London. Like he yes. was saying oh words with slang. God. And yeah. I was like, yes, this is exactly it. It's not whitewashed. That's exactly how you talk. I exactly. like it. I like it. it and when I, was, when, when I was writing the script for it and imagining, okay, what, yeah. what kind of kid is, is going to con- convey mm. that ch- character, Jag's character, I did want it to be someone from East London and yeah, I did want it definitely. someone to have that have that swag have that confidence but also is going through all these challenges and, and is trying to figure it all out and I wanted somebody who can convey that so when we mm. kind of set 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 out the um casting to for auditions for the role we actually had which I, I want to give a shout out to all the boys that auditioned we had 45 young sings nice. come audition for this role and <laughs> we we went through each of those audition tapes and every single one of them blew me away so it was so hard to choose who we were going to pick for this role and we had to figure out somebody who was right in terms of kind of the age demographic and then the right kind of persona and and sahib really fit the role perfectly and that's why we decided to go with him but mm. even the other 44 mm. boys they, they were incredible and and it just showed us that there is so much talent coming yes. through in our community yeah. and and specifically in in these industries as well we're talking about the arts industry so we're talking about kids who want to go into acting directing filmmaking so maybe not all of them want to become actors but a mm. lot of them want to go into the film or entertainment industry and I was just over the moon to see that because mm. obviously growing up we we know that our parents were encouraging us to get into medicine everything accountancy become yeah. an accountant become a dentist become a lawyer yeah. and i had yeah. a lot of that too obviously when i decided to go study history and then gender studies my so, family were a little bit like what is this what are like, you going to go are you do confused about your gender like, uh, <laughs> that's the main one yeah. this, is, this is a conversation we're not ready for yet jasper okay the, the, con- the conversation about gender studies was interesting but we'll save that for a bit but yeah to see that we're now having more young people that want to get into the in- these industries is is incredible mm. because we do need 
people from our community diversity. there mm. we do need diversity in all of these industries because the point is it's not just so much about having us there and having a face there but it's also about the storytelling side of it because if there wasn't me writing this script yeah and it was perhaps flunder or ex white mm. male he <laughs> could have conveyed that story very differently so yeah, this cool. is why it's important we get our voices heard so that we can be in control of how our identity is conveyed mm. and can be in control of that narrative of how our story is told and that is only mm. going to happen if we try and get into these industries um, and try and get our voice heard so yeah shout out to all those boys that auditioned <laughs> for that role and all their parents who were behind mm. the camera like do it again. Say it louder. <laughs> say it louder. And you can you can hear the mum. Cheer, cheer them on again. Yeah. Do it properly. <laughs> Let me say it to you. Then give me the reaction. Yeah. Yeah. You can hear the mums and dads brilliant. like behind the camera. Um, no, good. It's good to see parents cheerleading in that way. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was amazing. Just to take a step back into the bit about judging people, Garen. There was a kid that I went to school with. Um, a few of our friends know him. Well, I'll tell you his name after. But okay. he went to the same school as me. Um, he cut his hair when he was okay. in year six, and now he's at Amadari Singh. So he okay. went from keeping his hair to cutting it to now going for Amadari. And I'm just like, I'd love to understand journey. his journey as to why he went down that route and what made him pivot and come back. Uh, maybe it was influences of like people, maybe it's his partner, etc. But all those little, as you said, microaggressions that maybe pushed him into, not push him away, but bring him back maybe. <clears throat> Who knows? Some people say it's your gismet or whatever it is. Mm. Like you may maybe have to go through that to realize who you are later on. But mm. I didn't like how when I was younger, I thought, why did he cut his hair? He's an idiot. I'm keeping my hair. But I was only young. <laughs> I didn't understand that. But now if I talk to him, I can understand why he did it and where it came from. So that's helpful. Yeah, and... this, is, this is the thing. The older you get, I like to talk about the netra and the third eye. And a lot of what I focus on in my coaching, uh, Jasper, is about this thing. It's... We, we focus on all of this, you know, all the time, Oki Karda, Nindya, Jugali, all this continuously. And it's like you start the journey of looking inwards and start discovering yourself. You could spend your whole life, you know, people ask, I have other people, other faiths who ask, you know, what is Sikhi about? And it's like, Sikhi is a discovery of self. You spend your whole life understanding who you really are, where you come from, you won't have time for all these other, mm-hmm. other, other things. So you're abs- absolutely right, Indy. Uh, mm-hmm. I agree with you there. On a side topic as well, um, kid, things are actually losing their hair now. So instead of actually cutting it, it's just falling out the older we get. So yeah, bro, that's, that's a male thing, man. It's not a no, 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 it's thing. a male thing. But I was like, okay, this is like, maybe there's another face to this where like you cut your hair when you're younger. Fine. When you're older, you lose your hair anyway. And I'm just thinking, yeah. I, I thought, am I the only thing out there that, that feels this way? Loads of others do. Mm-hmm. And I said, do you guys have issues with taking hair supplements or potentially doing what I do, which is not wearing a bug that often, but allowing your hair to breathe, having it loose. So that way you don't lose it. And I actually got slighted by a few people that I know for actually doing this and not wearing a bug. They're like, where's your bug? I'm like, I'm doing this so I don't lose my hair. And they're like, well, why are you being vain? I'm like, I'm not being vain. I'm trying to stop my hair falling out. That's not, isn't the purpose of sticky to keep your hair? And I was like, it depends on how you interpret it, in, in which way I get it's a representation thing, it's a respect thing. I know, yeah. I know. But yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there is a balance there that I was thinking like, okay, why am I being pushed out now for trying to sure. save my hair? Say that again. Wait, wait, you went a bit fuzzy there. I'm saying, um, why am I being pushed out for trying to keep my hair? Let me come back on a question there, though, because the, the question to you is actually quite good. What's the intention of trying to keep your hair? Because that's, as in, when I say trying to keep your hair, yeah, as in, like, keep it, not cut it, or yeah, yeah. let it fall out, mm. what's what's the intention, then? Cause you want Just it to, to stop good. it from falling out, because I was getting clumps of hair for falling out, and it was it was getting quite upsetting, really, understanding that for years I kept my hair... And then slowly it started coming out in bits where like I had spots in my forehead. I was like, I don't, mm. I don't like this. It, it's, it's actually messing with my own confidence. That's mm. the same. Yeah. Okay. okay so that, uh, isn't that the point there again? Like, isn't it vanity then? You want, you well, don't want to be bold. It's, it's not, it's not vanity. It's confidence. And it's also how I feel within myself. Yeah. So you but, feel but, but it doesn't mean that I'm disrespecting Siki any, any more by doing no, this. No, I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm. I think just, exactly just, what you're doing right now of, of asking yourself these questions that's the point, is, yeah. is the journey. Mm. And, and that's the mm. point mm. that asking yourself these things of your relationship with this or understanding how you're feeling about this is, is the whole mm. point. So I don't think there is no right and wrong. There is no black and white with these situations. I think what you're doing right now of asking yourself about why you feel these certain ways or where these feel, feelings might be coming from um, mm. Is, is really valid. And I think that's the really important part 
um, and, and figuring out what is right for you because as we've said before every single person's journey is going to be completely different um, and everyone's connection with their gears is, is completely different yeah. so keep asking yourself those questions and, and keep figuring it out I think of course of course 